Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of our Let's Play for This is the Police. I believe we were on day 12. Let's go ahead and see where we were. Yep, day 12. My morning ritual was plagued by the smell of Vicus Varga's fruity cologne. It was like the sharp citrus scent was chasing me around the house, as if Vicus was right there in my living room. When I finally realized the smell was coming from a big basket of oranges, it didn't put me any more at ease. I'd opened my door to lots of threatening mail, evidence of criminal wrongdoing, even a dead ferret or two. But fruit? Never. You the fruit guy? Excuse me? Was it you that brought the basket of oranges? Nah, it was here when I arrived. Fine. So who are you? Today, I'm your driver. And uh, where are we driving? To work. That's it? Yeah, we have to make an important stop along the way. Where? The ranch. What ranch? Just the ranch. Fine. The morning seemed surreal, and I took in the magic. Why wreck it with meaningless chatter? As my tight-lipped chauffeur drove an hour through God knows where, I started to feel like I was in the middle of a bad dream, probably lying bloody and concussed in the alley behind the old colony club, my nose buried in a rotten orange peel. But no, this was no dream. The silence was real, the sound of the engine was real, the dust was real enough too. And there was the ranch over the horizon. It all seemed familiar. The Sand family's overbearing mansion has been the talk of the headlines for decades, but few have managed to get closer than a few miles. I guess I'm just lucky. I didn't know you took private meetings, Mr. Sand. Only if I expect good company. I'm surprised my company ranks at all. Today, yes. Today is a special day. So it seems. Do you often go to the old colony club, Jack? Every week. Meet any interesting people there? As a rule, no. Sometimes you make a date, right? Sometimes make new friends. Sometimes, I guess. But that's not why I go. And why? I consider it a hobby. Hmm. A hobby? Do you know anything about my hobbies? Well, judging by the half dozen animal skins I stepped on walking over here, it's not much of a reach to say you like hunting. Love it. Well, I say that now. It seemed so tedious when I was a child. It took ever so long. But now I'm older. I've developed a new talent. Oh, what talent is that? Patience. The will to wait for the right moment. Let's say you want a deer. You know, you deserve it. You've even decided what dishes its meat will go to and where you'll mount its horns. But to get that deer, you've got to wait. To sit in the bushes and stay nice and quiet. Professional hunters will tell you that the hunt is a rare craft. There are many rules. It's shrouded in mystery and ancient skill. Well, that's all complete nonsense. To get a deer, you just sit on the sidelines for a long enough time, pinpoint the moment when it's finally time to shoot. I learned the talent, Jack. But not like you, oh, Jack. You truly are the master. I don't understand. Oh, come on, Jack. I know about the half million. I know your plan. Kendrick told me everything. Needless to say, I'm impressed. While some people learn to hold their breath for minutes on end and not to rustle the leaves too loudly, why you decided to just become the foliage. 
You turned yourself into a bush, surrounded by deer who've been so fruitfully multiplying for decades. But all this time, you've held your rifle at the ready. Uh, forgive an old man his imagery, Jack. I have the heart of a poet, I confess. Look, I don't know what was said between you and Kenrick, but it sounds like you got it wrong. Oh, I think I understand everything just fine. And I think we understand each other quite well. Jack, in the coming war, we'll make excellent partners. What war? One war falls upon every generation. My grandfather drove out the Ambersons back when he was 27. My father destroyed that psychopath gangster, Boris Bell, when he was a sprightly 30. At 69, I'd begun to think my war had passed me over. But my time has come at last. Tomorrow, Vicus Varga declares war, and I'm obliged to answer. So, we're talking about Varga now? I don't know how he thinks. I don't even know whether he plans his actions or not. I can't divine his purpose. Hell, I don't even know where he comes from. He's a man not of our breed, wouldn't you say? But when he arrived here, I invited him in, told him we could work together. An official invitation penned in my own hand and written on some very expensive paper. And can you imagine his reply? A fruit basket. What sense can be made of such a message? I guess it means whatever you want it to. Precisely. I'm late for work, Mr. Sand. You know, Jack, I could just give you half a million right now. Cash, whatever denominations you like. But I would never insult you so. If I went stalking my prey for so many years, I wouldn't want someone else to shoot it for me. I understand you, Jack. And I'll never ask you for anything that's contrary to your nature. Just think about our conversation. Think about it. And call me. Like I said, it's a whole new life, and I've had to give up some old habits. One of them, keeping away from things that don't concern me. Now I can't afford the luxury. This spotlight I'm under? Concerns is all I got. Help Christopher Sand, help Vicus Varga. Fuck Christopher Sand. Remember, we're going against the mob. Tell him it's Boyd. I'm too tired. I can hardly walk straight. Can I go home? No. Today some of my relatives have come to visit. They're from another country and we never even met before. Can I have the day off? Uh, fine. I drank too much today and I can't hold it together. Can I go home? No. That was a long cutscene. That was almost 10 minutes long. Let's see what we got going on today. Uh, City Hall. We have to wait five days before, okay. All right, let's see what today has to bring us. Here's your week's salary. Was able to brilliantly pass all the exams. They earned a boost, cool. Tomorrow's gonna be the day. Don't let anything happen to him until then. Do we have any investigations? Nope. Put all three of them on it.
We received a call from the club manager who said that a brawl broke out in the main hall involving over 20 men. Security are keeping back because some of the combatants are carrying knives. Several wounded several wounded already lying on the dance floor, but no one knows why the mayhem broke out. Jeez. That's a lot of cops. Uh, let's bring SWAT. Oh my gosh. Really? <laughs> Guess she really did want to stay home. Now we have no officers available, so what the fuck? Two teens walking their dog got into an argument and eventually one of them unleashed the dog on the other. The police were called by a girl who was riding her bicycle nearby. Yep, well we're stuck now until those guys are done. Looks like we're going to miss that call. Got him. Hurry up. Sorry if you can hear that, guys. My Skype is going off. It's like loading messages from earlier today. Come on. Par parishin parishioner parishioner. Why can't I say that? Parishioner Maria Serpentine reported the sounds of gunshots inside the church. A bearded man in a hat entered the confessional, and then a minute later I heard a few gunshots. Then the man calmly left the booth, took off his hat, and crossed himself and sat down on a pew. I think he's praying. Ooh, he probably shot that priest. Let's send four. Linda Howard, her words slurred, said the dentist paralyzed her face during the latest visit. The monster stuck me some kind of boost. Oh, it's a false call. I think he just gave her Novocaine. Got him. Officers found non-automatic weapon at the crime scene. What do you want them to do? Ice cream vendor noticed a suspicious black bag, which has been lying unsupervised on a bench for the past few hours. Let's go ahead and send the rest of our guys. It's probably going to be nothing. Oh. 
Don't know what I just did, but I guess it worked out. An investigation. Okay. So the lady's there. There he goes. He's riding his bike. Huh. That's not right. Let's try this again. Oh, I fucking did it again. Damn it. Okay, let's try this one more time. Me and my brother are gonna do that. And I got the pawn and necklace. I was carrying the necklace to the pawn shop. Someone ripped the back of my shoulder. Didn't have a weapon, he just grabbed the bag and rode off. Okay. See if we can close that one out. Got him. Awesome. See what day 13 has to bring. Corn Monument, City Administration, do finance, dance festival. Francis Kendrick won't succeed to Jack Boyd. There's a big sale going on today and I don't want to miss it. No? The fuck? Yeah, these guys are the screw-ups. They're the ones who all asked for the day off yesterday. So we'll make sure we'll hire a new... A new cop for the, uh, what was that, shift day? Freeburg's first mafia war in decades has spread chaos across the streets. Major criminal gangs vie for power, and the outcome of the struggle is impossible to predict. One thing is certain, a couple weeks from now, only one family will rule the city. Kuo Yan Neng turned out to be a member of the gang known as the Red Mass. He could help you take down the gang if you make him an informant. Uh, sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Wait, what are we doing here? Bu Liang gave several interviews in which she spoke about atrocities committed by the Red Mask Gang. She embellished a lot and distorted the facts. If you want to keep people from panicking, you need to take down the gang within the next four days. Okay. This man was an honest servant of the city. Today he was buried with the military honors. Someone was... Oh, jeez. Yeah, that was that one shift where they all got messed up. Jack, keep up the good work, and we'll make sure your final days at Freeburg PD are much more comfortable. 
let's go ahead and I don't want to hire him. Guess we have to. Okay, what is this one? A passerby rang the police when he saw a naked man running through the streets. Pursued by a woman carrying a large kitchen knife, the woman was shouting, I'll gut you, you fucking faggot. That's not very nice. She found him cheating. She wants to slice that dick off. They should be able to stop her. Varga stirred up some punks and they went and attacked one of the family right in the barber shop. We've already sent our own men, but we don't know how many scumbags we're up against. You can come join the party, but don't get in our way. Nope. How do I dismiss this? An unknown vehicle struck librarian Klimek Kalow Kalinowski at a Polish, yeah, at a Polish, <laughs> that's funny, at a pedestrian crossing and drove off. The victim was found dead on the scene. Ooh, that's terrible. Now the detectives are busy right now. Uh, how do I pull them off that? Investigations. Pull you off, dude. Actually, we'll pull off her. We'll pull him off. Wait. Yeah, I'm putting all of them on it. Okay, that's good. And you guys can work on this one. Mr. Sand's nephew looked out his window and saw some of Varga's men smashing one of his cars. It looks like someone needs to go remind them that this kind of behavior is illegal. Nope. A girl entered Eddie's Burgers, ordered a Diet Coke, and started shouting at the other customers with a handgun. The cashier called the police, and in the background, there were gunshots and screams. Meanwhile, the crazed young woman is shouting, I hate fat people. Let's send four and SWAT. It's probably going to be false alarm. It's almost night time. Got her. Mr. Barger gave us a new sports car, so we're going for a joyride. Now suddenly out of the blue, we're getting chased by a damned helicopter that's shooting at us. This isn't going to... Uh, what should we do here? Should we help him? That's another gang, right? The Vargas? Hmm... Why not? It's probably a bad idea sending them, but whatever. An alarm came from an armored truck. Armed men have blocked a street, shot out the armored truck's tires, and are trying to seize the bags of money. Oh, we could have used SWAT for that one, damn it. The narrow street is blocked by two vans near the armored truck. Three armed masked men have surrounded the truck, and one of them is carrying a blowtorch. On the roof of one van is a fourth criminal who shouts something to his accomplices as he sees the officers approach. The 
criminals take out their automatic weapons and open fire. Ooh. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. A night watchman during his rounds followed some noises to discover several homeless people fighting over a bundle that was lying on the ground. We'll wait for them to refresh and then we'll f send our guys to go break that up. Almost, almost, done. Get them boys. Some of Sand's men have pinned us down in an alley. They're aiming to maim. Mr. Vargas said he can go to here for help. Sure. Probably should have stayed out of it. Three new frames. Well, that's not enough to finish it. We'll just wait. Uh, shit. See? Look what happened. He's trying to help these other people, and now it's. Three more? Oh, I might be able to finish it here. Bam, bam, bam. All right, we're gonna go get him as soon as we get some officers. We'll do that part tomorrow. Jack Sand has decades to straighten his position in the city, but that doesn't mean that his grip can't be broken. Take care that Varga is ahead on points after two weeks in the war and successfully carry out at least half of his jobs. And one more thing, just so Sand doesn't start suspecting you betrayed him, don't let Varga get too long on points. If Sand is out in the lead for three days in a row, it'll cost you your life. Ooh. Scary stuff, man. Day fourteen. Oh, he's on the other shift? Okay, we're gonna have to wait for that one then. No worries. Uh, our people were scouting ahead of Mr. Sand's movements and we spotted a punk carrying a gun. There's sure to be a few more of these bastards lurking nearby. Let's get together and turn the tables on this slime cr slime ball crew. Uh, Neo. You know, let's just send these guys. I think we'll be good. We'll send SWAT too. We're good. We'll get him. The attendant at the arcade called in a complaint about two teenagers who broke the steering wheel off the turbo nitro machine and are currently fleeing the scene. The wife of Mayor's press secretary loves choral singing. Today's her birthday, so please send some in with good voices. Really? 
Alright, whatever. Hurry up and refresh, guys. We need you. Got him. Got him. Oh shit, I wasn't supposed to arrest him. Damn it, I was supposed to use him as an informant and then took down the lady. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. No, I ruined it. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. An eyewitness reports that a man is selling weapons on the street right out of the trunk of his car. Someone is getting shot every night around here. You need to finally do something. We'll wait for these guys to refresh and we'll send them. We'll have five. That should be enough. Jack, you swore an oath to serve a city. If you can't keep your promises, we won't keep ours. Oh. Mr. Vargas told us to bring him a van full of fruit, but Sands men caught up without caught up with our driver on the bridge and they're throwing the shipment into the river. Maybe you can get there quickly enough to save a box or two of oranges. Should be enough time for one of the officers to refresh. Possibly. Uh oh. Yeah, those other guys are busy right now. Shit. Uh... Wait, officer caught. Officers harm, unharmed civilian. Wait, what happened? Offender caught, officers unharmed civilian killed, loot found non medical. Shit. A dock worker sighted several armed men making their way between some cargo containers. Soon after he heard shots and some screams, the precise number of armed men is unknown, but port officials report seeing at least five. Whoa. Damn. What's the other one? Fuck the sands. Holy shit, there's too much stuff going on right now. It's probably a bad idea. We don't have enough officers for this one. Those frickin' city hall people took two people for the day. I meant to read that, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Boyd, I feel bad about coming to you again, but you're really the only one who can help with these. Those records my ex sued me for, well, I got them back, of course. Fuck you. Oh my gosh. Frickin' Vargas, you guys suck. See if we can close this case. Dark colored car comes tearing around the corner. Hopped the curb and kept on going. Knocked the man over. Didn't even slow down. Uh, wait, what? 
The dark colored car comes tearing around the corner, hopped the curb, and kept on going. Knocked the man over. Didn't even slow down. So which car hit him? The dark colored car? Is that red? Let's see. Not long before the crash, I kicked a couple drunks out the bar, and they were having a fight with some of my regulars. A few days ago, da 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 da. Okay. I sat to the people in the car. They were right by me. The man in the passenger seat had a beard. I can't see that. Kim McNaughty being followed. He's Oops. Let's try this again. So. Getting in the car, driving the car, crossing the street. No? Got to wait for some more frames, I guess. Really? So we can get one of these people's stripes. Let's give it to her. Why not? Considering certain recent events, we are obliged to grant some concessions to the feminists. You are to make sure that at least half of the staff at the police station are women. You have three days. Seriously? A taxi driver overheard someone screaming and noticed a few people gathering on the bridge as he was driving them past towards the port. He stopped to see if anyone needed help, but as he approached, he saw that a man was threatening to throw himself and two children into the icy water below. Jason left us. I lost my job. There's no way to survive. It's better if everything descends down to the taxi driver looked in suicide. Okay. Go stop him. An elderly man speaking in a raspy whisper just reported a break in. There's someone in the middle of the They're marching all around. Hurry. Well, it's as good as we can do right now for that one. We've got a situation here. Two tearful boys, clearly in a state of shock, are standing dangerously close to the edge of the bridge. Besides them, their drunk and distraught father is slowly pushing the children closer to the precipice. Strong gust of wind almost blows one of the children off the bridge, but he recovered at the last moment and stumbled to the ground with a scuffed knee. The man starts his words, saying that there's no point in delaying the inevitable. Yay! Happy ending. Uh, we gotta wait for these guys to refresh, so let's do that. Oh, we got two of them. 
Secretary Abigail Jones told the police that her boss, Martin Quebec, returned from a meeting in quite a state. When he entered, he took a long bag of white he took a bag of white powder from a safe and shut the door. Now he is increasing yelling incessantly and making a scene, demanding that the secretary deliver him the head of a unicorn or cut a, cut her throat with a letter opener and then go after the rest of her family. Okay then. What is this one? Uh, a young drunken biker drove into the church, rode around between pews, defiled the sacred crucifix, and fled the scene. We'll send our all-star guy after him. Nope. Dick, Rick, and Mick always wanted to dine in an expensive restaurant dressed like punks. Today, they got a bit of cash from yesterday's haul and decided it was time to live a little. But before they could even get to the table, two of Sand's men entered the restaurant and shot them dead on the spot. We were stood watching outside and now they're furring. Ooh. A man wearing a suit walked into the lobby of the bank, locked the doors, and proceeded to kill several customers. He never said a word. He just started firing at people, reported one eyewitness. A dozen people remain inside the building, and the criminal demands are not yet known. What should I do? What should I do? Oh, jeez. Wait, how do I do that? Hold on. Neighbor market. Uh... How did I bring up that thing where I like sent them to like barbecues, training? I uh, can't find it now. Huh. It's not enough yet. Okay, there we go. Mm, that makes sense. I guess that car was the wrong color. So. That's blood on the car. Crossing the street. I'm driving. I'm hitting him. Blood. No? Hmm. 
Must not be ready yet. Oh shit, is that the main guy? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's right, because you were supposed to even it out between the two mafias. Gangs, whatever they call them. Oh, what? Wow, so I guess that's the end. I screwed up because I wasn't um, evening out the favors for the two gangs, so it doesn't let you go back and change it now. So that seems to be the end of our walkthrough here. It didn't get to the end. I apologize for that, but it was, I don't know, the game was okay. As you can see, there wasn't, there wasn't really much beyond what we were doing. You kind of just select a little option here or there you know, divert your storyline one way or another. Uh, yeah, you know, it was okay. If I had to s give it a rating out of 10, I'd probably say a five or a six. Probably wouldn't play it again, but yeah. It's cool while it lasted. All right, guys, thanks for checking out episode three. Looks like that'll be the end of our walkthrough for This is the Police. Check for our, I think the next game we're going to be doing is Ghost Recon Wildlands. So check for episode one of that soon. Thank you. Goodbye.